Change Information Broadcasting Minister, Mr. Prakash Javadekar, is slightly delayed. He'll be with us any moment now. I will once again request all of the delegates to please take their seats. We are about to start our proceedings for this high-level segment. And we request all the delegates, the stakeholders, and participants in this session to take their seats. Thank you. Flamingo, uh, thanks to the conservation of the Gujarat Forest Department. I am delighted to um, welcome Shri Prakash Javdekar. Give a big hand to him. Big Prakash Javdekar is the Forest and Environment Minister, Climate Change Minister, and Information Broadcasting Minister. He is also the chair of the COP13. <clears throat> I'm very happy to extend a warm welcome to all of you to the COP13 in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. And this is the first time that India is hosting the Migratory Species COP in India. And we are very uh, thrilled to see the large participation from different parts of the world to this COP in Gandhinagar. And uh, as I am about to begin the session, I am seeing large number of delegates coming into the hall. I would request them to quickly take their seats so that we can start our session. May I also request uh, the ministers coming from the state government to come and uh, take their seats. There are a number of state ministers of forest and environment who are uh, participating in this session. Thank you. I also extend a warm welcome to Babul Supriyo, the Minister of State for Forest and Environment, and a singer himself. He is the second time. Yes. <clears throat> Requesting all delegates to kindly take their seat quickly. 
So we are starting the session right away. All the delegates who have come from different states, also from Indian states, so please take their seat so that I can start the session immediately. Namaskar. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Abhilash Khandekar. I'm a journalist, writer, and environment campaigner, and I'll be host of this event. As a passionate wildlife advocate, I feel privileged to be here today in this capacity. As you all know, <clears throat> the 15th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity will take place at the end of the year and adopt a global biodiversity framework for the next decade. CMS COP13 falls at the very opportune time to ensure that migratory species priorities are integrated in the framework and this high-level segment will help formulate key messages to support CMS contributions to this process. Today's event is comprised of two consecutive sessions. The first will be dedicated to the ministers and other high-level government officials, while the second will engage executives of international organizations. The second session will begin around 4, 4.15 this afternoon. Now, I would like to call on the stage the esteemed speakers of the first session, starting with Honorable Prakash Javadekar, Minister of Environment, Forest, Climate Change, and Minister of Information Broadcasting in India, who is the chair of this event. May I request Javadekar ji to please take the seat. <clears throat> May I have now the honor to invite other participants, Honorable Tomis Law, Krosik Minister for Environment and Energy from Croatia, Honorable Rotwin, Minister for Climate and Environment from Norway, Honorable Begum Habibun Nahar, Deputy Minister Environment, Forest, Climate Change of Bangladesh, Honorable Chi Sam Ang, Under Secretary, State Ministry of Environment of Cambodia, Honorable Babul Supriyo, Minister of State for Environment, Forest, Climate Change in the Union Council of Ministers in India. <clears throat> Mr. Jokain Plasbar, the State Secretary at the Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety of Germany. <clears throat> Ms. Kumari Veer Sekara, State Secretary to the State Ministry of Wildlife Resources, Sri Lanka. Jan Verling, Ambassador for Environment, Forest Affairs, Department of France, and Dr. Muhammad Ali, Vice President of the Saudi Wildlife Authority of Saudi Arabia. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> As we are about to begin this session, I would like to introduce all of the speakers. You know, Mr. Javadekar is a leading environment minister and uh, conservationist in his own uh, stride in the sense that he has been the second minister, second time minister for the environment and forest. He was first um, the environment forest minister and climate change portfolio holder in 2014. And he led very effectively the Indian delegation and as uh, deputy to Prime Minister Modi in the COP, very famous COP of Paris for the climate change and uh, put forward India's uh, role in the global climate change mitigation exercises. I welcome Javadekar Saab here. Javadekar Saab is also, as you may not be knowing, that Javadekar was when he was the uh, member of Rajya Sabha from Madhya Pradesh, he had donated not from the ministry, but from his own uh, ministry, this member's MPLAD fund rupees 25 lakh for a bird habitat protection in Indore. So let us give a big hand to the minister. It was his rare gesture from, uh, not from the ministry's funds, but from his own ministerial, that is member of parliament's local area. Normally the ministers uh, spend uh, money on bridges and culverts and other areas, but here is a minister who spent 25 lakh from the, minister, uh, from the MP's fund for the conservation of a bird habitat in Indore called Sirpur Lake. So give a big hand to Ms. Javadekar. As you know, the other participants are also ministers and high-level mm, mm, high level executives from different uh, areas. I would request, I would love um, announced uh, Mr. Minister for Environment, Tomislo Krokik. He mm, is Croatian politician and currently the Minister of Environment and Energy in the government of Andres Pelikovic. He serves as Minister of Environment and Energy since June 2017. He has previously held the post of Minister for Labour and 
pension system October 2016 to 17 and a member of the Croatian Parliament 8th Assembly 2016. Besides, he also works as assistant professor in the Department of Finance, Faculty of Economics and Business of the University of Zagreb, if I am able to pronounce it rightly. Our third panelist is Mr. Sjöving Rotven, Minister for Climate and Environment. He is the Norwegian politician for the Liberal Party and he has been appointed as the Minister of Climate and Environment in January 2020. That means only last month. So welcome him to this international forum. He has served as the State Secretary at the same department from 2018 to 2020 under the Minister Ola Elispian. The fourth panelist and important panelist is Mr. Is Babul Supriyo, the Minister of State for Forest and Environment in Government of India. Babul Supriyo is, a, is an Indian politician and also, and I, I would like to share with you that he is a very famous playback singer and he comes from the West Bengal state of India and is a live performer, television host and a musician besides being a politician in his own right. I also welcome Begum Habibun Nahar, the Deputy Minister, Ministry of Environment, Forest, Climate Change, Government of um, Bangladesh. Madam, welcome to you. My next uh, panelist is His Excellency Chisam Ang, this, who serves as Under Secretary of State for Ministry of Environment of Cambodia. Previously, he served as Deputy Head of the Forestry Administration and Chief of Cambodia Tree Seal Project. I'm very happy to welcome Jokane Flesberth. He was appointed as the State Secretary, Federal Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation, Building and Nuclear Safety in 2013. He comes from Germany and uh, he has been, uh, he has held a number of important positions as Director General of Nature Conservation and Sustainable Use of Natural Resources at the Federal Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety. I also welcome Sri Lanka's State Secretary to the Ministry of Environment and Wildlife, Kumari Veer Sekara. She serves as Secretary to the State Ministry of Environment and Wildlife. And Mr. Yang Verling, he was appointed as the President of Mercon as Ambassador for the Environment Department in December 2018 in France. Jan Verling became the environment with the minister and also involved in very early in the field of nature protection. He is a specialist in wild fauna. He joined the environment movement France Nature Environment in 1988 and is the following year he joined the Greens. So thank you very much. I would like to proceed ahead now. <clears throat> May I now request the chair of this session, Shri Prakash Jaudekarji, to um, give his uh, opening remarks for the session and uh, I would request him to be very specific about his uh, involvement and also about the CMS COP which begins here tomorrow. So may I request Javadekarji to please open um, the session with your remarks. Welcome everybody because uh, this is an exciting place an exciting event of CMS. It's conservation of migratory species in wild. Be it mammals, be it aquatic, be it birds. As I said, it's an exciting world. Even to know about this world is itself enriching. And you are here, thinkers, researchers, activists, NGOs, and all others who can really contribute to better preservation, conservation, and protection. This is the theme of this conference. And I'm very happy to tell you this is the largest participation. Already 3,200 have registered themselves for this COP 13. 
and i think tomorrow when the main session opens it will be a full house and world is watching towards what we decide because it has a relevance for the future of mankind if we preserve our nature we will live peacefully and make progress if we destroy our nature nobody will pardon us and therefore preservation of nature as a whole and in indian ethos as i was telling swing the rotwan the norwegian minister that we worship animals we worship trees we worship all kinds of species because it has a symbiotic relationship with our existence and therefore this cop 13 is a hugely important and india is very happy to host it and happy to host world's largest cop on cm cms tomorrow indian prime minister narendra modi will inaugurate through video this conference today is the high level segment tomorrow also many of you are here but tomorrow various countries delegations also will join and therefore as i said these birds mammals animals and we have a lot of them world 70% tigers of wild are in india nearly 3000 tigers 200 2967 it's huge population we have 30000 asian elephants we have 500 plus lions we have <coughs> the rhinos more than 3000 single horn rhinos and we have lot of aquatics in our 7000 kilometers of sea coast this is treasure of india i regard this as a treasure of india because this is the epitome and certification of good ecology so this good ecology is certified by the existence of and we have huge biodiversity so this is the convention where more than 130 countries are participating and what we are aiming at we are planning because this is 2020 next one decade we want this year to lay the foundation for next one decade and therefore we will be celebrating this year as super year for biodiversity this is very important this high level segment will feature special dialogue on convention of migratory species priorities for 2020 post 2020 global global biodiversity framework government of india has prepared a draft declaration focusing on biodiversity framework for post 2020 and i expect this high level segment which will give various suggestions will incorporate and make it perfect showing our real ambitions and this gandhinagar declaration will become 
a historic one because it will include all your important suggestions and recommendations. The Gandhinagar Declaration recognizes that CM is the lead intergovernmental agreement for cooperative international efforts on conservation of migratory species and their habitat. It further affirms that ecology connectivity is top priority. As I always say, my Bangladesh minister is here and we have tigers, we have a common forest in Sundarbans. Tigers don't know geographical boundaries. It's one world for them and they go freely. Same happens with birds. We have a story of Amur Falcon. Birds in millions come from China, roost in Nagaland, and then after their new birds are ready, they fly. This is 145 gram bird, so small. But it flies from Nagaland to Bangladesh to West Bengal to Andhra Pradesh and then to Goa. And from Goa, it takes 160 hours of non stop flight. Very true. 160 hours of non stop flight to South Africa and Somalia. We put chips on them. And we tracked it, how they do it. And I'm happy that this is, this is wonder of nature. We, we are duty bound. And here is the role of public participation. Earlier, for a few years, people used to hunt them and eat the birds. But now with new awareness and taking cue from the good practices of the world, they decided that, oh, they are our guest. They are welcome at their home because we have a place. They have the whole world, world as their place and therefore Welcome to home. This is also part of the theme for this CMS. And therefore, people who used to kill are now protecting. They have become protectors, not hunters. And therefore, this is the public participation and role of people in keeping that biodiversity alive and protecting the migratory species. This is happening in seas also. This is happening everywhere. And therefore, we in this conference need to listen to all country experiences and success stories from all countries. If we do that, we will all benefit and we can emulate from each other. We can learn from each other. So, friends, I need not go on details. Tomorrow also I will have to give some lecture before Prime Minister. But I will end by saying that welcome to this beautiful city, beautiful land of Ahmedabad. There our Prime Minister for 12 years as Chief Minister and has laid the foundation of good governance which he now is spreading to the whole country and therefore welcome stay here enjoy and participate with full spirit your suggestions are welcome thank you thank you mr javadekar <clears throat> thank you whatever you said is indeed very important the world is watching us the world is watching how india is conserving its biodiversities and how india is uh, is conserving its uh, migratory species and welcoming them to india May I now request uh, Amy Frankel
Executive Secretary of the Convention of Non Migratory Species, to join me on the stage. Ms. Frankel is a leading expert on biodiversity conservation and, and international environment law and policy. You just joined the Secretariat of the Convention on Migratory Species, bringing with you 25 years of experience. Tell us why this moment is important for biodiversity and migratory species. But before I invite her to the stage, let me say that AMI does not really need any introduction in this extended global family of conservationists. I am told that some of the migratory species of birds and mammals even know her personally well as their chief protector and advocate. AMI, please come and deliver your speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those kind words. Uh, it's a real honor uh, to be here today, and I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of the CMS uh, family and the CMS Secretariat. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Minister uh, Javdakar and the Government of India, as well as the Minister Babul Suprio, uh, for hosting this amazing COP13. I think it's fair to say that this surpasses any CMS COP that has been held to date, and we haven't even started yet. I would also like to thank our Master of Ceremonies, Abhilash Khandakar, who, as you can see, is a gifted moderator and also a very well-known journalist, and I thank you again for your kind words. So my job in, in this discussion is now to set the stage a bit for what we're about to uh, discuss uh, in, in several panels. This is truly well, first let me say that we are very lucky and, and grateful to have such a distinguished group of, of speakers here, uh, both in the ministerial uh, panel before you, as well as the speakers that will come after, which will include the heads of many UN agencies and other international organizations that are key to solving the challenges in front of us. I also want to recognize the many VIPs uh, including the state ministers who are here joining us today, and we look forward to hearing your questions and comments uh, after each panel. So let me set the stage by saying first that this is an absolutely critical time for the Convention on Migratory Species and for biodiversity more broadly. As I think everyone knows, last year was the first time a global assessment on biodiversity and ecosystems services was released by the entity IPBIS, based also in Bonn, next to our offices. And what they had to say was not very encouraging. They found, among other things, that we are losing biodiversity at an unprecedented rate. Despite everything that we have done, despite the strategies and the plans, we are not winning this. The thing that caught the headlines, however, and this did make it to the newspapers, the New York Times, the Guardian, I mean, it was all over the world. I think Le Monde uh, in Germany, for sure, it was everywhere. But the main message that was on those front pages was that we could lose a million species to extinction in the coming decades. Now, that includes many insects, but it also includes many migratory species. And of course, many migratory species depend on insects for their survival. The IPIS report also found that the conservation status of migratory species and their habitats are worsening. And this has been confirmed by a report that our own secretariat has prepared for this meeting and released at this COP, and we'll be discussing it as part of the COP agenda. But most of the species that are listed on Appendix 1 are declining. Their populations are declining. So clearly, we need to take a hard look at what we're doing and see what we can do to step up our action. Now, CMS has truly a unique role among all of the biodiversity and other multilateral environment agreements uh, that we have uh, to use to solve these environmental issues. It's the only global agreement who has a mandate to focus on migratory species and their habitats. And I believe it's time that we really move it to the next level, given the challenges that we've been told are facing our natural world. Now, as the minister noted, this COP is happening at an incredibly opportune moment, kicking off what's being called the super year for biodiversity, with a chance to help shape 
the next decade strategy for biodiversity, which is being called the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. Luckily, the CMS has been at the table from the beginning. A working group was set up in 2018, which includes not only CMS parties, but also many international uh, nonprofit groups and others. We have been organizing expert workshops to see how can we find a way to have the CMS priorities reflected in what comes out of this post-2020 process. This framework is important for the whole community because it sets up a strategy for 10 years. And it's also the same 10 years which are the final decade of the Sustainable Development Goals. So I also believe we have a real opportunity to align the actions that are needed for both migratory species, biodiversity more broadly, and of course the, the Sustainable Development Goals. Which if you recall, the vision of the Sustainable Development Goals is that we can achieve biodiversity and other environmental needs while achieving development, while achieving social needs, while achieving economic needs. We can do it. There are wonderful examples in India and in all of the countries that are represented here. Because this will cover the whole decade, it is crucial that we get it right this time and that the framework not only includes the right level of ambition, but also that priorities for addressing the needs of migratory species are strongly reflected in the final agreed framework. Now, those of you following this process closely know that a zero draft, which is the, the basis for negotiations, was released in January, just last month, and we've had a hard look at that and uh, put our analysis, an initial analysis of that, into the COP documents. And you can find all of that. It's document 17, and the set of documents that go along with it will be discussed at this meeting uh, as a formal uh, resolution that will come out of that. Uh, so have a look. And as I said, uh, we have already developed some key messages, which are also captured there. Let me just quickly summarize those. So some of the priorities that the CMS family has identified are first, that the concept of ecological connectivity be reflected in the post-2020 framework. Now, what is ecological connectivity? We should know it because it's what is essential for our species. It's essentially the heart of what is needed for migratory species to be able to survive and to move from one place to another during their natural cycles, where they need to both have freedom of movement unimpeded, but also be able to arrive at habitats that are ready to support their needs. So that's what ecological connectivity is about. But this concept is not only relevant for us, for migratory species, it is absolutely relevant for the mandates of the CBD, Ramsar, climate change, desertification, the World Heritage Convention, and others. Now, an essential element of this concept is that countries must cooperate to achieve shared conservation goals. Again, that's at the heart of what we do in CMS. But the current strategic plan, which you know, covers this decade that's ending this year, does not actually include any commitment that countries will work together to implement it. The way it's structured is that each country implements its own national biodiversity strategy and action plan and though countries, of course, do work together, we believe it would be helpful if the global uh, uh, strategy that comes out at the end of this year includes a commitment to work across boundaries, political boundaries. Second, the NBSAPs, the National Biodiversity Strategi Strategies and Action Plans, most of them only c contain commitments to address the, the, uh, the commitments under the Convention on Biological Diversity despite many calls, including by CBD parties, that they reflect the commitments of governments to other conventions, including CMS. This is a critical point, because if countries include in their national plan a commitment that they'll implement all of the biodiversity conventions together, as well as other uh, uh, conventions such as climate change, of course, and desertification, that is, is such a powerful way to ensure coherence at the national level, 
and better flow of resources, capacity building, and, and money to implement at the national level. So we also hope to see that in what comes out at the end of the uh, negotiations. Finally, and my last point, is that of course CMS is about species, and we hope to see a strong species goal uh, and targets included in the post-2020 framework, and we know there's many partners out there to, to help make sure that happens. Uh, my last point would be, in order to make this happen, we need all of your help. There's a lot of voices at the table around these issues. The good news is we've heard the words connectivity. It's actually in the zero draft, but we need your help to accomplish, uh, to see that the CMS priorities are in the document at the end of the day uh, when it's adopted at the end of this year uh, in the CBD Conference of the Parties 15 and it reflects ecological connectivity, international cooperation, integrated NBCEPs, and a strong goal for species. Uh, thank you very much. I greatly look forward to hearing from the ministers and joining the second panel. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Amy, for, this, for that beautiful and thought-provoking presentation and setting the scene for these discussions. I now I would like to now start this session with my questions to the panelists. But uh, before that, I would like to request all the speakers to please keep your interventions to the point as we have a large panel and we would like to keep the discussion focused and also make it very interesting. As I pose each question, I invite you to indicate if you would like to respond. I encourage you not to make much lengthy statements, but rather focus on the question at hand and engage in an interactive discussion. As the chair of this session, uh, my, first question. my first question of this session goes to Mr. Prakash Javadekar. And uh, as you know, Mr. Javadekar, the first question is about the migratory species connect the planet and together we welcome them home is the is the theme of this CMS COP13. This theme, this theme underscores the fact that countries must work together beyond national borders to achieve the conservation of species that each country welcomes home. So my question to Prakash ji is, what does COP13 theme mean for India? I think COP13 is very important, not only for India, but the world. And as you said that migratory species migrate from one country to another country. They don't understand the political boundaries, but it's one word. And therefore, we must also assure that we must assure them. Hello. We must assure them that they are welcome home. So it should be a home in every country. So Though the political boundaries can be different, but it is one home for them everywhere. That is the basic concept of this new idea. And therefore, this theme is very important. And based on that, our experience is that birds, not only birds, but all migratory species, Really, if you protect, if you give correct feedback, they also adapt to the new developments. And they totally then adapt themselves and take a new route or something, amend the route, and, but ensure that they, their life gets undisturbed. And therefore, this is a wonderful concept. As you have said, I should be precise. Thank you very much. No, no, you can be this thing as the, you are the chair of this uh, <laughs> session and you Easily have got extra I advantage on that. That after opening, I thought that not ask me again. No, the, you, you have got the first right, but then now I will open the you know, floor for this thing. More, more questions and uh, I would like to um, the panel to respond to them. The second question would be, but before that I would like to um, say something, the current session of uh, UN for Strategy of Biodiversity that ends this year includes no commitments for parties to cooperate internationally to implement any of the goals and targets, yet we know that such cooperation is essential, particularly for migratory species. 
so my question to you all your excellency how might the new post 2020 framework address the need for international cooperation would like to answer sir may i repeat the question sir yeah think how might the new post 2020 framework address the need for international cooperation thank uh, you so we will uh, the new post 2020 framework address on the need of international cooperation you know that what we come to the, the question we would like to to sing what the movement of the migrants and how that can move and how to uh, can uh, keep them to stay or and can welcome their help so every the habitat should be conserved and to make sure that her habitat can welcome all the migrants as we know that the wildlife that we have today is the result of our ancestor conserve for us so our what is our duty our mandate today is to make sure all that the migrant or the wildlife had to transfer to the next generation so and all the wildlife that has no border we different our human our human is the share the border uh, uh, among the, our country but the uh, wildlife they has no border and that we has their own appetite a everywhere in the planet uh, so that the planet it belong to them so that so would be to we consider the new post 2020 framework to address the need so i think the international should be encouraged all the party or non party or observer to make sure for conserve the, the habitats for the, their own country and also make sure of the corridor what we have to connect these activities um, among the, the country in among the region and would connect the region to the another region because some 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 uh, wildlife as bird the long fly flow movement it depends on the, the habitats that's from the from the breeding to the feeding so that the post uh, 2020 framework should make sure one is the guideline to conserve all that habitat and what the technical aspect to be implemented in habitat and and who is the participate in that to implementation that framework among the our government private sector academy and other stakeholder uh, international and national organization and as well as a local community local community is playing a important role to conserve our other thing and to make sure that they go and back home so that the post 2020 framework should discuss and to get the result we are all together all stakeholder to be conserved their habitats and make sure the habitats to be sustainable should be long long way to go as what we have today and our next generation should have also that so that i what i i think and what to share in this section thank you Thank you, Your Excellency, for uh, underscoring the importance of uh, connectivity and also sustainable development and uh, saving this uh, 
migratory species. May I now move on to the next question? Let me say this before that the recent UN Global Assessment on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, the IPBS report found an estimated 1 million animal and plant species are now threatened with extinction, which is a huge number, many within the decades to come and more than ever before in the human history. So we have to be very careful and we have to be really very focused in conserving these migratory species. These undoubtedly include migratory species as well as species that they rely on for food. Yet the zero draft for the post 2020 global biodiversity, biodiversity framework does not include a dedicated species target for 2030. My question to you, Mr. Seving, from Norway, what are you doing there? So the question is, what kind of actions and commitments are needed to reverse this trend, which is very disturbing trend, because one million animal and plant species are now threatened with extinction, particularly for migratory species. Should the post-2020 framework include a dedicated species target to address these declines? Um, and what Norway can do for that? Well, thank you very much for your uh, question, Mr. Moderator. Uh, let, let first start by um, thanking India for hosting this uh, excellent COP and for all my colleagues for joining us on stage. Uh, it, it is only fitting that uh, India, as a mega diverse country, which is home to so many uh, amazing species and such richness, uh, hosts this very important event. Now, uh, on to your question. Uh, from Norway's perspective, we, we certainly agree that there is a a great uh, reason to worry um, based on the recent reports that we've seen, both the IP best report and the IPCC. They summarize the best uh, research, the best knowledge by date, and the results are um, frightening. Now, I think it is important that we see the climate crisis uh, together and in connection with the crisis in nature, because they are connected, uh, and we are dependent on uh, not just stopping the loss of nature, but uh, actually working for more nature uh, and nature-based solutions to halt the climate crisis. And this is important for all species, but certainly for migratory species. Now, um, I believe that uh, Zero Draft acknowledges that species needs to be part of the ne negotiations and the final outcome uh, in, uh, in Kunming. Um, and I agree with you that there is uh, uh, probably a need for fine-tuning when it comes to the wording here. So I think that the CMS could play uh, an important role and provide valuable input in this regard. Um, and, and it is important that the uh, CMS, with its mandate con to conserve migratory species, develop its own strategy uh, to address these challenges. So this might include more innovative use of resources. Um, it might include stronger international commitments. So um, during this COP, the uh, CMS proposes to produce an analysis of the status and needs of migratory species, mm -hmm. starting with the most threatened ones. That's a good beginning, I think. And looking at the framework more broadly, uh, I think we need to shift the focus to an eco-based, ecosystem-based approach. Uh, because right. the ecosystem approach needs to be mainstreamed in, in all sectors. And this entails a cross-government efforts. So uh, it's certainly, to answer your question, uh, important to look into this in more uh, detail. Uh, there is need for some fine-tuning going into the important summit in, in, in China. Uh, and I think this could be a, a good beginning uh, to that process. Thank you. But this you. question is so important that the decline is there across the continents. So I would like also the other speakers also to uh, respond to this query. What kind of actions and commitments are needed to reverse this trend? So, Your Excellency, would you like to um, make an intervention to what the Minister from Norway has said? Yes, Mr. Supio. First of all, uh, a very warm welcome to everyone uh, who have come from different parts of the world. In many ways, more than not, more than one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a great honor for India to be able to host uh, COP13, and especially for uh, you know, uh, be it birds, be it uh, you know, you know, wildlife, be it aquatic animals. I think it's it's a great thing that so so many of us human beings, we come together 
to, to save and to think about those species who cannot really talk about their own problems. So they are going to be very happy to know that we are not only talking about them, but also discussing how it, uh, can, we can make the world better for them. Uh, you know, we, uh, I want to congratulate everyone, my warm regards to everyone on stage uh, from different countries, uh, representative dignitaries, including my boss, Sri Prakash Javrigarji, uh, for his welcome address uh, in which he uh, broadly and in a very precise manner explained what exactly we are trying to achieve in this, uh, in this COP. You know, most of us are, um, uh, you know, ministers, uh, most of us delegates from different parts of the country, world who have come, most of them are government employees looking at different departments and in many ways we are also migrating species because we move from one department to the other. <laughs> Today I am the forest minister with sir, tomorrow I could be the petroleum, I could be in petroleum. Tomorrow today you are the finance minister, tomorrow you could be the minister for railways. So we are all migrating species, one, once we move from one department to the other, we want so let, let us add new new migratory species of politicians no, no, to the so, migratory thing. You know, it's very, uh, a joke is a very serious thing as said by Charlie Chaplin. So, you know, I, I would like to remind everyone that we are all, uh, in, in, a, in a way, we are migratory in our own way and we migrate from one department to the other also in life. And when we go to a new place and the journey itself, not only should the journey be the, the transition from one to the other be smooth, but also the place that we are going should also be welcoming. It should, it should make us, it should make us, you know, comfortable. And I think that is exactly what we are looking at. There's a lot of important data stuff, uh, you know, acronyms and all of that, that is that, that everyone is talking about. Uh, but I needed to put a few things uh, in the, in the simplest terms. And I think it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for all of us. And it's a great endeavor by, uh, you know, by India. Uh, yes, I am, I am proud of the fact that India is hosting it. And I want to uh, congratulate everyone from the Ministry of Forest, Environment and Climate Change for doing a wonderful job. If you could please have a round of applause for them. Everyone from Secretary Sri K. Mishraji, Mr. Das Gupta and uh, the Gujarat government for being such a wonderful host. And uh, the, the, the migratory species, uh, you know, the wildlife, the birds and everyone. They're also going to be very happy to know that every food that was you know, served in lunch was all vegetarian. So that <laughs> in a way is also That's a, great, a observation. great message given out. So I hope all of you have a great stay. We have some great interactive sessions. There are going to be uh, you know, strong, uh, strong uh, uh, bilateral discussions where serious problems But before are you go ahead, to. Mr. Suprio, I would like to ask you a question because you are sitting next to the Bangladesh minister. So, the connectivity is also very strong and you come from the same region. So, I would like to oh, ask about the Sundarban connectivity of the Tigers. Oh, the so, my question is to Begum Nahar, that yeah. how would you, how would, would she Sundarban. like to say about the Sundarban, which is the most protected and most important area in, the, in uh, India well, as well as in Bangladesh? Well, you see, uh, uh, we in, 2000, in 2010, we had set a target in India that by 2022, we are going to double the number of tigers in the country. In 2010, we were around, around 1,400. In 2019 itself, that is three years prior to uh, our goal, we have not only doubled, but have reached the number of 2,967. And you know... Uh, That's a great achievement. Yeah, 70, I'll give you a very interesting thing about that, about <laughs> we to, sitting together. Uh, 2000, you know, 70% uh, of the world tiger population is in India. India and Bangladesh, the, the Sundarban uh, forest that we share together. And the common thing between, uh, between the three of us, the tigers, her and me, is that they are called Royal Bengal Tigers. <laughs> I come from Bengal and she comes from Bangladesh. So that is why I think that's, a, that's a common factor. It's a Royal Bengal Tiger. So it's in great hands. I, am a Bengal, I come from Bengal, she is from Bangladesh. And the tigers are also Royal Bengal so Tigers. So how would Madam so it's in good like hands. to react? We'll take good care of them and by 2022, we hope that we are not going to, we are going to multiply and cross the 3,500 mark. We are walking so, Begum Naha, how would you like to say mm, and respond to uh, Babul Supriyo's remarks? You can have that mic there. Bolo. Bol sakti hai, mic le lije pas mein. I 
আমরা সবাই এখানে উপস্থিত হয়েছি শুধুমাত্র for human beings it's very hard to move from one place to the other and adjust to the adjust to the situations prevailing in that particular area so it must be harder for those animals and species uh, whether it is wildlife aquatic creatures or uh, on the land so she says that it's a great thing to see so many people are sitting down together out of love to think about them and to do something good about it Again. thank you mr suprio for being an interpreter because we had only french spanish and english interpretations available but i am sorry but you had done a wonderful job amra ei gujarat e ekhane uposthit hoyechi bishesh kore bharat ar bangladesh er koto guli migratory system ke amra jodi samne rakhi tahole bodha aro bhalo hobe amader ei department e dui jon montri achen ekjon cabinet montri ami obosshoi upomontri amader cabinet montri er elakay kintu হাতির করিডোর আছে আর আমার এলাকায় আছে রয়্যাল বেঙ্গল টাইগারের করিডোর তো সেই জন্য শুধুমাত্র মাইগ্রেটারি বার্ডস না শুধুমাত্র পাখিরাই এক দেশ থেকে আরেক দেশে যায় না আমাদের এই দেশটি দুটি বৃহৎ প্রাণীরও করিডোর হিসেবে খুবই একাত্মতার সঙ্গে তাদের দায়িত্ব পালন করে যাচ্ছে অর্থাৎ সেদিক থেকে আমাদের কারো কোনো বাধা নেই যে বাংলাদেশের বাঘ ভারতে ঢুকতে পারবে না কিংবা ভারতের হাতি বাংলাদেশে ঢুকতে পারবে না সেই জন্য অন্তত এদিক দিয়ে আমরা খুব শান্তিপূর্ণ অবস্থানেই আছি আর আর পৃথিবীতে এটা he is my boss and i am his deputy so uh, that he is very happy about the fact don't worry your cabinet minister is not listening now uh, <laughs> so she is very happy that the cabinet minister got the elephant corridor and she got the uh, tiger corridor so she is more she is working more ferociously towards uh, towards yeah, yeah. the towards the that job true, that has been true. So that has been interested on her and and therefore a uh, lot of elephants and tigers move between the borders of india and, and bangladesh, bangladesh without any kind of visa complications and that is what is going to be in the future as well is that okay yeah. you, should i should i rest my mic or you have something more to say i want to say something little more okay. something about ecological <laughs> connectivity sundorbon bangladesh er sarbo brihot jalabhumi ebong ditiyo sarbo brihot jalabhumi o kintu amar oi monche elakay orthat amra মাইগ্রেটারি বার্ডসের দিক থেকেও একটি বিরাট দায়িত্ব পালন করে থাকি এবং শুধু পাখি না আমরা জানি সবাই আমাদের পছন্দ কি ইলিশ মাছ সেই ইলিশ মাছ তো তাদের জীবনের সব সময় নদীতে থাকে সমুদ্রে থাকে সমুদ্রেই বেশিরভাগ থাকে কিন্তু ডিম ছাড়ার সময় তারা কিন্তু কোন দেশের কোন আবহাওয়া থাকে সেটা চিন্তা না করে নিরিবিলি একটি নদীতে যায় ডিম ছাড়তে অর্থাৎ তারাও নির্দিষ্ট একটি সময়ে মাইগ্রেশন মানে মাইগ্রেটারি জীব হিসেবে আর একটা দেশে ঢোকে সেই একইভাবে কাছিম তারাও কিন্তু মাইগ্রেটারি এলিভেন্ট হিসেবে আরেক তাদের জন্মস্থান যেখানে সেখানে গিয়ে ডিম ছাড়ে তাই আমরা প্রকৃতিকে বাঁচাতে গেলে এই মাইগ্রেটারি সিস্টেমকে অকাতরে মেনে নিয়ে সবার প্রতি ভালোবাসা রেখে আমাদের প্রকৃতিকে প্রতিবেশকে এইটাই আমাদের প্রতিজ্ঞা হওয়া উচিত ধন্যবাদ স্যার বাবুল জি ওয়ান সেকেন্ড রিকোয়েস্টিং ইউ টু টেল দি অডিয়েন্স হোয়াট ইজ ইউ সেইং ওয়েল ওয়ান অফ দ্য মোস্ট ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট এন্ড দ্য মোস্ট ইউ নো ট্রেজারড ডেলিকেসি হুইচ বাংলাদেশ এন্ড বেঙ্গল শেয়ার উইথ দি ফাইট অফ কোর্স whether their product is better or ours is better and that is a uh, aquatic fish which is called hilsa i think uh, that is something that even in the western country it's very very uh, very very famous and what she is saying is that even that hilsa 
which stays in, in which is a sweet water fish basically it doesn't know where to lay its eggs it just you know swims around the uh, the interconnected rivers that flow through bangladesh and india and they find a quiet place where they lay their eggs and they expect to raise their children there so it is very important for us to create those environment where the fishes they they are deep water fishes so uh, sometimes we not be able to connect to them mentally but otherwise we can do everything that is possible to to actually stand uh, you know stand together in creating this uh, cleaner rivers and cleaner uh, waterways so that these fishes and can feel free to travel from one portion of the earth to the other and in the end she says that she is very happy that india and bangladesh are doing some great work in that direction and this entire cop she wants to thank the gujarat government and the entire crop is not only good to think about the small uh, one particular species but about every other millions of species we are getting in yeah. all of that more so than that 1 million species, animal species she's giving our best wishes about that thank you thank yeah. you mr subriyo thank you, thank you begum nahar for this wonderful presentation and uh, and showing solidarity with india and also establishing the um, connectivity once again so i move on to my next question but uh, i have been ignoring largely this part of the region for this thing so my next question is that about addressing potential impacts on biodiversity in government and private sector decision making processes it is necessary to reduce the fragmentation of important habitat and connectivity and the loss of biodiversity including migratory species so my question can you provide some examples of policies that your government has put in place to ensure that the importance of biodiversity is considered in decisions that could impact migratory species what could be included in post 2020 framework to strengthen such actions by all governments and private sectors anyone would you like to respond sir any one of you because so far i have been restricting myself to that area so i have come to this so i have also come from bangladesh to india and i'm going back so so the question was about uh, can you provide some examples of policies that your government has put in place this question is in fact open to all of us all of you but then can you say yeah. something about sri lanka okay. can you say something about your neighbors and thank you very much before uh, give my direct answer to this uh, question i like to say simply like this uh, if uh, someone uh, violate our uh, human rights Uh, we can go any supreme court or any other courts but uh, migrated species or uh, other wildlife animal can't go any courts or they have at any courts or anything to go there Be uh, because they, they we have to protect our, our migrated species and other all animal uh, in this case uh, Uh, actually i am newly come uh, in this uh, post uh, i know then, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so i give the my answer to in uh, as a sri lankan answer uh, nearly we have taken to step to uh, make uh, out of uh, one of the electricity uh, generated uh, wine mill plant it has been very nearly uh, very special uh, special place in boondala national park Uh, actually our government uh, uh, take a very good uh, decision to uh, uh, for the stop this uh, uh, electricity uh, uh, generator uh, wine mill that yeah. is the uh, very good uh, decision for uh, taking in sri lanka thank you would you like to say dr ali something about it about the policies in your government and also the global policies for the framework of 2020 thank you uh, since it's my first time to take the floor i would like to thank uh, india for this uh, great uh, uh, conference and great uh, uh, preparations for this great meeting actually in saudi arabia we have uh, taken the, the, the interlinkages between the private sector the government and uh, the social so the, 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 the the social uh, uh, so society as 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 a comprehensive uh, three uh, element governance system and we have taken this into our environmental uh, uh, impact uh, or environmental policy which uh, a strategy been approved by the royal court 
as a, a way forward to protect uh, uh, environment in all, in all its elements, including uh, the, the, the migratory species uh, in, in, uh, in our country. Uh, since uh, Saudi Arabia has a, a unique uh, position geographically between the three uh, continents, and uh, it's a, an important uh, migratory route for uh, um, uh, uh, avian and marine species. So we take this as, as, as an important part in our uh, policy uh, making and uh, uh, the, for the conservation of migratory species. Very important because we, if you don't have policy, then we'll not be able to. And uh, Babul Supriva and Jaudekarji had just said that because of policies, the tiger population in India has gone up and uh, that goes to show that what kind of conservation policies India is adopting. So my question again to you, sir, that would you like to say something about the policies that are required to protect the migratory species of animals? Yeah. Yes, thank you. And I, I know moderators dislike it, but allow me also to thank India, uh, our good friend Prakash Yavadeka. India has become a, a real hub for international negotiations. You hosted the CBD a couple of years ago uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, then we had the CCD uh, COP last year and, and now CMS. And um, asking to your, answering to your question about the policies to be implemented, um, the, um, the simple truth is that we do not have appropriate policies uh, implemented around the world. Uh, that's uh, the reason why we um, are in this situation, as, as the minister said, we are in the super year um, for nature. Ten years ago, we were preparing for Nagoya and Germany was in the presidency. We worked very, very hard to come up with a strategic plan, the um, Aichi Nagoya um, uh, targets, and we were very proud at that time. We were really proud and thought, now this is a breakthrough. But actually, we lost a decade. And this cannot happen again. And it is not because I, I hear a lot about the targets. It's not because the targets were wrong or less, not ambitious enough. It was because we were not having the right instruments for the implementation. Uh, we are in, compared to the climate regime, um, we are in a situation having um, the climate framework convention without the Kyoto Protocol and without the Paris uh, Protocol. We, have, Very right. we, we do not have the instruments, but we need the instruments. And um, in the center of this, uh, apart from what we are doing for the species, we want, and we want to see a clear um, species-oriented target, but apart from all that, we have to address the absolutely unsustainable uh, land use and marine use around the world. If we do not address this, we all can forget about ambition. ambition. And CMS, it's sitting right in the center of all the debates. And um, reflecting on what uh, Kennedy once said, don't ask uh, what the country can do for you. Um, ask yourself what you can do for the countries. I want to uh, invite uh, the CMS family um, to ask not what others can do for CMS, but um, vice versa, what you can do for, for wetlands. If I look at, uh, at Ramza, um, uh, we have a specific role in protecting wetlands and migratory species are an absolutely key ambassador for that. We can link it with the CCD that was hosted here because water and soil are closely connected. We can combine it, of course, with, with CITES uh, and also ensuring that uh, talking about species management, we do not forget about conversation because, uh, conservation because this is in the center. And I can, I can name it. And uh, finally, the, the SDGs that had been mentioned by, by Amy. So we do want to see CMS being a powerful trigger, but I want to repeat, if we do not address the land use sector, the marine use sector, it's the same with the electricity sector um, in the field of climate change. Uh, they have a powerful lobby, but if we do not address it, uh, if we do not fight for biodiversity, it will be lost. Thank you, Mr. Josain, because it's also very important that, like Amy said, that we are beginning this decade, which is very important. In the last decade, we saw a lot of losses to the nature and uh, the habitat. So in 2020 onwards, we can't uh, afford to have these kind of losses. So Your Excellency from Croatia, would you like to respond to the question? Yes, thank you. And I'll start just like Johan by thanking our host, uh, Mr. Javadeka, for uh, having us here. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful occasion uh, to 
to come here and discuss these very important issues. Uh, if you let me, I'll go to the, to the beginning of the, of the panel, to the first question. Uh, I fully agree with, uh, with Ms. Frankel when speaking about uh, the current situation and the post-2020 biodiversity framework. The CMS has to be uh, in the middle of it, in the focus. And that is something, uh, that is the way which has no alternative. I think that we, we made a certain uh, progress when speaking about the climate change and fighting the climate change, only because uh, we have very strict and, and very clear goals. Uh, I think that the post-2020 biodiversity agenda needs to have a uh, very strict and uh, if, 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 if you want uh, numbers, uh, but uh, the, if you want, to, we need to have numbers in this document, but we need to have goals. Why is it so? Because if, if you don't have a clear goal, you, you go somewhere. We need a, a very, very, very strict track. Uh, and having that in mind, uh, speaking about ecological connectivity is one of the things which needs to be addressed in this document too. I agree with you. When, uh, when speaking about the macro and, 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 and micro level measures in, yeah. in any particular country, uh, in, in our in our uh, in our try to to to, to fight uh, for the biodiversity in our country we have we think that we have a very successful agenda with natura 2000 because under this uh, natura 2000 network in croatia we have almost 37 percent of the country and it enables us to to protect the the species and the habitat and more than 230 species are under Natura uh, 2000 in the Republic of Croatia uh, protected. When speaking about this micro level, we have very interesting solutions. For example, on our highways, we have green passages under the, uh, under the, uh, the, the above the uh, highways, and the, the, that is the, the that is the way for our carnivores to 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 go from one side to another. And it was it was a very and it is a very good solution. When speaking about the fishes, uh, we have the connectivity on our on our rivers ensured by the, the fish passages, which is again a very good solution. So uh, I think that uh, every country has its way to 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 go uh, and, and also uh, to, and also we can learn from each other. Yes, but the, the idea is to share this experience and to try to, to, to make the, the, the general one <laughs> as, as a good way for, for the future. Thank you. So that is very interesting observation because India is also trying that linear infrastructure because of the movement of animals, in mainly elephants and uh, uh, tigers and others. So we are also trying to impress upon the respective ministries to create such infrastructure so there are also underpasses so and there are no accidents and uh, that is what we learn from Croatia if they are doing this thing. So um, the next question I would like to move on to but before that I would like to say migratory species are an important component of biodiversity and CMS is the only global agreement that specifically addresses their conservation. To ensure a coherent and effective implementation of the framework it is necessary that the priorities and mandates of CMS and other biodiversity agreements are reflected and that their role in implementing them is also recognized. So my question to the panel is how can we ensure that the new biodiversity framework recognizes the mandates of CMS as well as other biodiversity agreements and their role in implementing them? Would you like to answer, sir? Yes, it's about you. the mandates of CMS. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Let's uh, speak perhaps a little bit French, if you yeah. if I may. Um, D'abord, excusez-moi, mais merci également. Je voudrais joindre mes remerciements à, au gouvernement de l'Inde uh, pour l'accueil de cette COP CMS uh, so please, et saluer. Please press button two for French channel in your receiver. First is English, second is French, and third is Spanish. Oh, sorry, sir. Please carry on. I don't need translation. <rire> Je voudrais donc saluer l'accueil la, la, que nous fait le gouvernement de l'Inde pour la COP CMS et saluer son engagement pour l'environnement parce que la COP CBD il y a deux ans, la COP désertification l'année dernière, la COP CMS cette année, ceci marque un engagement très fort de l'Inde pour l'environnement à l'échelle internationale. Euh, 
Je, je m'amusais à la remarque tout à l'heure de dire que nous tous négociateurs ici, nous sommes tous des espèces migratrices à force de faire toutes ces conventions internationales qui nous font aussi beaucoup voyager. Euh, je voulais souligner quelque chose qui est important aussi, c'est que dans deux ans, nous allons fêter les 50 ans des premiers sommets de la Terre de Stockholm et que le rapport de l'IBES nous dit une chose extrêmement surprenante, c'est que c'est au cours des 40 dernières années, donc la période qui nous sépare de cet anniversaire de Stockholm 2000, qui sera célébré en 2022, c'est durant ces 50 dernières années que nous avons détruit 60% du monde sauvage. C'est notre génération qui, est, qui a fait cela, qui a été la plus destructrice de la biodiversité euh, au cours de l'histoire de l'humanité. Je crois donc que nous avons, nous, cette génération, une responsabilité toute particulière euh, dans toutes les COP qui vont euh, se succéder. Celle-ci euh, est un point d'étape extrêmement important dans l'année 2020, qui sera l'année, euh, évidemment, l'année de la biodiversité. Vous avez posé une question sur la coopération internationale, est-elle nécessaire Elle l'est pour cette COP CMS, elle l'est pour toutes les COP environnementales. Euh, L'environnement n'a pas de frontières, les espèces migratrices n'ont pas de frontières et nous avons évidemment besoin euh, d'avoir une coopération internationale pour toutes euh, les conventions environnementales euh, qui sont devant nous. Je voudrais faire un lien particulier entre la COP CMS et la COP CBD qui va... Euh, s'ouvrir dans quelques mois, euh, en fin octobre. Pour moi, le lien, il est évident avec euh, un des objectifs qui va être discuté, que la France soutient énormément, qui est cet objectif potentiel de préserver 30% de la planète en air protégé, marine et terrestre. Mais si on réussit cet objectif, si on réussit cet objectif de 30% d'air terrestre et marine, ce sera formidable. Mais n'oublions pas que Évidemment, pour que ces aires soient des écosystèmes préservés, il faudra qu'il y ait de la connectivité entre ces aires. Et donc le lien, pour moi, il est évident. Il est là. Il est entre le fait qu'il faudra porter ces 30% d'air protégé marine et terrestre à la COP CBD et en même temps demander à ce qu'il y ait une connectivité très forte entre ces aires protégées, parce que c'est évidemment la clé de la sauvegarde de la biodiversité, notamment pour les espèces migratrices, mais pas que. Euh, je voudrais également euh, souligner que pour la France, il faudra euh, que euh, euh, des liens très forts existent évidemment entre toutes les conventions euh, euh, qui parlent de biodiversité, la COP CMS, la COP CITES, la, les conventions euh, de Ramsar, mais qu'également nous adressions des messages à la COP climat à Glasgow, parce que le changement climatique est une des euh, causes majeures et elle va devenir, devenir de plus en plus de perte de biodiversité, elle modifie grandement aujourd'hui les comportements des espèces migratrices, des oiseaux qui passaient d'Afrique vers l'Europe, aujourd'hui restent en Europe, ne retournent pas en Afrique. Il y a des modifications très importantes, donc nous avons aussi des messages à adresser à la COP de Glasgow, à la COP climat, pas seulement à la COP CBD. Espérons que la COP climat intègre notamment le fait que la protection de la nature peut contribuer jusqu'à 30% aux efforts d'adaptation euh, et d'atténuation du changement climatique. Donc, euh, bien évidemment que nous avons tous une responsabilité. C'est une responsabilité internationale. La France prend ses responsabilités de son côté. Nous avons euh, depuis des années mis en place euh, un système de trame verte et bleue. C'est des connectivités nationales que nous avons mis en place depuis 2009 qui permettent de connecter les aires protégées. La France est également un pays qui dispose de la deuxième superficie maritime mondiale. Et à ce titre-là, nous avons développé un réseau d'aires marines protégées parmi les plus importants. Nous avons aujourd'hui 500 aires marines protégées dans le, qui se déploient sur la métropole et l'outre-mer. Je veux citer notamment deux aires protégées, celle de Nouvelle-Calédonie, le parc naturel de la mer de Corail, qui constitue aujourd'hui avec 1,3 million de kilomètres carrés une des plus importantes aires marines protégées du monde. Et nous venons de classer euh, les, la réserve naturelle nationale des terres australes françaises euh, qui va constituer avec 670 000 km2 l'un des six, euh, plus grands euh, sites euh, au monde. Voilà les messages euh, que je voulais euh, adresser euh, pour l'essentiel euh, aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Would anyone offer you 
Your Excellency, you would like to respond to what he has said? Or I move on to the next question. Thank you. And before I open the floor for interventions from the audience, this is my last question. The last question is about um, the global framework included. So I would like to ask you, all of you, and I would like you to really respond, all of you, you are required to respond to this question. Would it be helpful if the new global framework included a provision calling for inclusion of commitments to CMS? and other biodiversity conventions in NB, SAPS, or other national level processes. So national biodiversity strategies and action plans, NB, SAPS, are the main national level tool to implement the Convention on Biological Diversity. Yet they do not always include commitments of parties to CMS and other biodiversity conventions. So question is that, would it be helpful if the new global framework included a provision calling for inclusion of commitments to CMS? So this is my last question and I really request all of the esteemed panelists to respond to that. May I ask Mr. Babul to say a few words on this? Would it be helpful if the new global framework included a provision calling for inclusion of commitments to CMS and other biodiversity conventions? Well, obviously, so you can, you can have, uh, I, I had, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the Honorable German uh, Minister a little while back uh, stressing the same thing that you know this is a huge large party uh, but the work uh, you know needs to go on and uh, when you need to keep a work you know a work going on or a mission going on uh, we are walking the right direction and in very simple words they say that if you're walking the right direction all you need to do is keep walking so keeping keep keep to keep walking the most important thing is the commitment to take the next next step you need to take the right steps because the policies are being framed, the discussions are being done. The, the, the best part is that the entire world now recognizes that uh, we have really, as he said, rightly said, that we have been, the, the, uh, this generation has been very cruel to the planet. And uh, therefore, we need to give back something in ways of uh, kindness, compassion. And, uh, and these conferences are, are places where all the minds all the intelligent minds who are working, you know, intricately on these subjects, they not only come together, but also exchange ideas. And exchanging ideas don't take us anywhere if you don't uh, complement that with the commitment to achieve something. To also achieve something. We have already done well, and I'm very, very sure with the presidential, with the presidentship of uh, my, uh, with Honorable Sri Prakash Javrigarji, uh, I'm very, very sure in the next three years, uh, we are going to India is known we say Vasudevai Kutumbakam. We means that Vasudevai you know for us uh, guests are uh, God close to God. So you know uh, these birds, these animals who visit India, they are also Vasudevai Kutumbakam also. And they are most welcome to India. Yes, they are most welcome to India and they are most welcome to survive and to multiply in the world itself. So it's not only about India; it's about everyone coming together and the thought process that is happening globally. So for that thought process, the policy forming is one side of the coin. The other side is the real true commitment to make those policies work and not leave those sustainable goals on sustainable so files. So you meant to say walking not the on talk. sustainable mm -hmm. files. So I think everyone is committed to do so. We are, uh, as he said, it is the 50th convention of the uh, Earth Summit that happened in Stockholm. So we are moving forward and we will be keeping moving forward. That's all I've got to say. So Your Excellency from Cambodia, would you like to respond to this? How to strengthen, basically, how to strengthen CMS? Because we are all doing whatever we are doing in our countries. But if you are not supporting CMS, then CMS will not be able to do whatever they are doing at the global level. You, yes. Uh, what we experience in our country, the first thing that our policy is to ensure all the biodiversity conservation is sustainable and, and reduce the independence of our local community. If we call the local community, is, they depend on the natural resources. So we find a way how to reduce this so that the livelihood improvement is very important. And certainly that's we conserve all the biodiversity area so that we 
1996, Cambodia is the comprehensive implemented policy. So the increase the protected area up to 55 area up to now and cover about uh, 7 million hectare and approximately 41 percent of the land total area. In this, to make sure all the biodiversity and habitats could be conserved. And, and also that in the protected area, we have to identify the, the habitat, special habitats, to make sure that uh, this habitat can be conserved and protected. Thank you. So, yes. Would you like to say something, Mr. Minister, from Norway? So, uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I, I think it's important that we see all the commitments uh, under biodiversity strategies uh, together. And now, working on a new biodiversity framework, there is uh, certainly, it's certainly true that the, the, the guidance we have for our national uh, biodiversity strategies and action plans, they need to be updated. Uh, there's no Very doubt nice. about that. So, uh, at least the way uh, we do it in Norway, our national biodiversity action plans, uh, we include all commitments uh, because when the state is to follow up on those kinds of strategies and action plans uh, all commitments should be addressed and I think this applies broadly to all government uh, government policies so That's there's no doubt good. that we need to update the guidance uh, when it comes to these plans uh, to be implemented nationally so what do you sir for your final comments before I open the just session? just a short comment uh, yeah the commitments should exist both on national and international level. Without commitment, we don't know in which direction to go. You can always say, I did my best. Yeah. Yes, but you, we all know that it's not true. If we, if we look at the past, we didn't do our best. If we did, we won't have been in this no, situation. No, we all have to do our best. Yes, we have to do our best. But I think that that kind of commitment should exist both on national agenda and, of course, on the international agenda. I hope it will exist on the European level, for example, because you're here somehow presenting the EU. And our biodiversity strategy should, should take this in the, into account. So, thank you. Thank you very much. So my questions are more or less over and I would like to now turn to the audience and invite remarks and questions to the speakers. Given the limited amount of time at hand, I will only be able to allow a couple of interventions and I would kindly request all of you to keep these interventions brief and to the point and those who can raise hands, I will uh, request them to ask the questions. If they want, they should direct their questions to one of the speakers or they can only have a general observation. The person who is raising hand right there, can we have the mic there? Uh, uh, I am from Tipura, I am Minister of Forest. I would like to ask the same as Mr. Verma, I'll ask you later. Where is Tripura? Yeah, the minister. Uh, I would like to ask the same as whether there is any uh, counting or there is any population census about the migratory part from different country to country. Is there any census report? This question is directed to CMS. I think, I think the question should be directed to one of the panelists about what we have spoken just now. So if you could read after your question and ask about uh, this thing to the panelists, any one of them would be happy to reply to you. Yeah. Can, can you identify yourself? You are from uh, my question is, I'm from Tipura, yeah. I'm the Minister of Forests. Uh, I just want to know the CMS whether there is any census report of migratory bird species from country to country. Any, any census species were migrated from here to here. 
Continue to so, can I ask Amy Obligent. to do this thing, to do, respond to this question, or we will take it later? Okay. Mr. Kesha Verma from Global Tiger Forum. So, mic to Mr. Verma. Well, congratulations. I am Kesha Verma from the Global Tiger Initiative Council. I'm sure we are headed towards the super decade of achievement under the chair, chairmanship of the Honorable Minister and the State Minister here uh, of India. And congratulations to everyone who's, who have assembled here. I have a different kind of question. You know, the World Economic Forum that took place at Davos, ahead of the 50, 50th annual meeting, the World Economic Forum, in its nature risk rising report, said businesses are more than dependent on nature with an estimated exposure of 44 trillion or half of the world gross domestic product. 13 trillion is the value of economic value generated by industries which are highly dependent on nature. 31 trillion is the economic value generated by industries which are moderately dependent on nature. And they are the three largest industries dependent on nature are construction, 4 trillion, agriculture, 2.5 trillion, and food and beverages, 1.4 trillion. My question is that if, and this question relates to both to growth as well as to sustainability, that if we are going to have a situation in which 50% of the world global product is based on nature, what are we doing to really improve the policy content in terms of industrial investments and incentives so that there is a perfect equilibrium between growth and environmental sustainability? I think I would request, this is not just a question addressed to our own honorable ministers, but to others because industry plays an important role. And industry, if it is not acting in a self-disciplined manner, can actually really come in the way of the corridors and all kinds of sustainable habitats. So what is it that we are trying to draw out of industries? Because there should be more industry present in such conventions, and what are they going to do? And what is the policy that honorable ministers have in trying to create that sustainability. Thank you very much. So, who would like to reply and respond to this question? Please. <clears throat> because Mr. Verma did not ask this question to a specific panelist. Yes, if I can refer to this question, uh, I can talk to you about the experience which we now have in the European Union. Uh, launching the, the Green Deal at the beginning of December, 10th or 11th December last year, we made the space for this new paradigm in functioning of the economy. How is it so? Uh, I think that the Commission uh, set a very, very good platform to change the paradigm and to take into account the most important things like di biodiversity, climate change, sustainable growth, and all other aspects which we need to have account if we want to, 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 to fight these uh, threats we are faced with. So that is, from our point of view in Croatia, that is a good way from farm to fork. Like, and, and the other agendas. We are waiting for the new biodiversity framework. So these are the ways, these are the platforms for going on a healthy way, let's say that way. Uh, I'm not sure that in this moment uh, the whole world is ready for that. And it's always about money. My economy ministers say that very often. It's always about money. Why? Because it costs, it, it takes some money. What we uh, what we try to do in Europe is to finance this transformation by just transition mechanism. That is the idea. Probably the same or similar mechanism is needed on a global level in order to, ga to go this sustainable way. It is not going to be easy, but 
from my personal point of view, this way has no alternative. What is the alternative? To, to die. Nothing else. So we have to go that way. So I think, Mr. Tomislav, you are the right person to answer this question because you are also holding the energy portfolio yes. in your country. So what happens when an energy project comes and when you are required to protect the environment? Yeah, it's, it's a conflict of interest in, in one person. Because <laughs> <laughs> from 8 a.m. till noon, I am the Minister of Energy, and then from noon till 4 or 5 p.m., I'm the Minister of Environment. <laughs> but I have to admit, uh, at, the, at, the, at the very beginning, I was thinking that it won't be possible, but I think that having these both uh, parts of the Ministry uh, these board sectors uh, under one ministry is a good thing. Why? Because if you if you come if you come across a problem, an issue, you can solve it inside inside one ministry, which is good. You know, if you have two ministers fighting for their for their for their sectors for energy and for the envy, it's going to be a, a bigger problem. Believe me. So, <laughs> when speaking about energy, I think uh, this way we try to go in Europe, especially in Croatia. I have to say that, uh, and that is the way of renewables is a good way, and it's totally sustainable, which I which I like the most. Yes, India is also adopting to green energy in a big way. Mister, I have a small request. You said that from the morning till about noon you are the power minister, and then from 12 o'clock till 4 you are the environment minister. I would say interchange that some days, be the environment minister in the morning and then go to power. I think that will be a nice balance. Yeah, think about the environment first, then go to power. This the other days, think about the power first and because you are powerful anyways. Thank you for this so idea. I'll, I'll, change, uh, I'll change that from Monday. From Monday. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. yes. Please uh, identify yourself and uh, direct your questions or your observations to any one of the panelists. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I am Salam Rajesh, representing Manipur Nessus Society. And my address is very specific to Honorable Environment Minister. Uh, is India going for a specific policy for transboundary migration of species and stopping of illegal trade across transboundary? We have taken very big steps to control crimes. But as far as migratory species are concerned, I'll tell you how we found a solution. In Andhra Pradesh, Koleru Lake is a very good wetland we have. And in that wetland, birds come from Siberia. What was the issue? People were complaining, which used to stay alone and their livelihood depends upon that area. So when we went there, they were thinking these birds as enemy because they were stopping their progress. So we bring about a change in land norms to an extent where their livelihood continued and still birds had no ill effect or anything uh, which will take away from them. So it was a win-win formula. And it worked. It worked and now in Koleru, things have settled last one decision we'll have to take. But this can happen. We can strike a balance in it. And that is the way forward because you cannot extremist either way. Only development and no conservation. Nothing, this won't work. Only conservation and no development is also not correct. So you have to find out a win-win formula and take care of both. Luckily, Mr. Javadekar does not have energy portfolio, so he doesn't have to, you know, uh, bifurcate his timing. But yes, he has another portfolio, which is the information broadcasting, and he keeps um, informing the country about the various uh, conservation and uh, protection steps that he takes in the environment ministry. So he has both important portfolios. So he doesn't have a problem like the Croatian counterpart. So may I have one more question? This is the last question. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time. So a lady sitting in the right with a red coat, can we have the mic please to her? 
I'm sorry, this is the last question of this session. Thank you very much. I'm honored that you called on me. We, I want to thank everyone for their interventions. We know that greater ambition is needed to conserve migratory species and the ecosystems they depend on. That's the key to the connectivity Amy spoke about and all of you have spoken about. State Secretary Flassbarth mentioned the need to end unsustainable use, to maintain or increase the extent and integrity of ecosystems, and particularly the biodiverse intact forests, coral reefs, and grasslands that are safe havens for so many of our migratory species, governments and all of us, all of you, must commit to increased ambition. I want to thank Ambassador Wehrling for mention, mentioning the concept of 30 by 30. So my question is to all of the government representatives, will you commit to protecting or conserving 30% of the ocean and 30% of the land by 2030, as proposed in the zero draft? Thank you very much. Please. Thank you, um, Sue, and, um, for this intervention. And I uh, just brief remarks on that. Uh, what we need, as you said, is highest ambition on biodiversity. And what I saw, and that is uh, what I, concerns me with the zero draft, we had the target of stop the loss, and then became in 2010 to a more um, foggy target. Let's take it like that. And now we postponed it to, uh, until 2050. That's more or less it. Whereas in the climate regime, we enhanced our ambition more or less from 2, point, uh, 2, 2 degrees to 1.5 degrees. Everybody agrees that we should try to get, reach 1.5 degrees. So we should have more ambition on biodiversity as well. Uh, otherwise, we are losing the capital stock um, of our planet. And with regard to the concrete question, yes, we support uh, the 30 by 30. Uh, but in a way, um, sorry for being so, so frank on that, it's a bit too conservative for me. We need also to address the whole fledge of political instruments, as a colleague said, industry, uh, the broad range of, um, of, uh, uh, of economy, including uh, agriculture uh, and, and uh, fisheries. Otherwise, it will not work. And uh, finally, I want to mention, as I said, we, we need to link the CMS issues to others. And as connectivity has been mentioned now again, uh, I think we have a decade for restoring degraded uh, ecosystems. Uh, and that is, is a very huge challenge uh, and opportunity at the same time for CMS and also for the broader range of biodiversity issues to use land uh, and marine restoration, ecosystem restoration to do better for biodiversity. Thank you. Mr. Jan, would you like to respond? Oui, um, yes. Je voulais répondre à madame. Euh, oui, la France s'est engagée sur les 30% de protection des aires marines terrestres et protégées. Elle va porter ce message à la COP CBD. Elle a pris l'engagement national. Le président de la République l'a fait euh, à l'occasion de l'accueil à Paris de l'IPBES l'année dernière. Euh, 30% d'aires marines terrestres et protégées. Nous avons aujourd'hui 23% d'aires marines protégées en France sur les eaux territoriales françaises, métropole et outre-mer. Euh, nous sommes euh, pas loin des 30% déjà sur les aires terrestres, selon les critères de euh, l'UICN. Euh, et je rejoins euh, euh, le, le, mon collègue allemand à l'instant pour dire que euh, dans la CBD, le combat sera sur une transformation et une modification de tous les facteurs qui contribuent à détruire la biodiversité. Ça prendra plus de temps, mais il faut le faire, il faut agir sur les changements de modèles agricoles, sur les changements de modèles extractifs, sur le changement d'épuisement de, des ressources, la surpêche. Tous ces sujets, il faudra les aborder aussi et commencer les décisions dès l'année prochaine, dès cette année. Mais dans l'urgence et dans l'immédiat, effectivement, il faut prendre rapidement des mesures de conservation sur au moins 30% des espaces terrestres et marins. Et, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure et je souligne cela, il faudra que nous prenions de cette COP CMS le message de la connectivité pour l'intégrer dans le message de la CBD parce que évidemment qu'on ne réussira la protection des 30% que si 
euh, on évite la fragmentation parce que la multiplication, l'addition de plein d'air protégé, de petites aires protégées, ça peut faire 30%, mais si c'est très fragmenté, les espèces vont disparaître malgré tout. On voit ça en Asie du Sud-Est avec beaucoup d'espèces dorang outan et d'éléphants. Nous savons que c'est la fragmentation qui les menace et pas le nombre, le pourcentage d'air protégé. Donc la connectivité est évidemment un sujet essentiel. La semaine prochaine, nous serons peut-être beaucoup d'entre nous à Rome pour la deuxième session de travail du groupe de travail CBD. C'est le bon tempo entre cette CMS et la CBD pour travailler ensemble. Thank you very much. I now take this opportunity to thank all my honorable speakers. Thank you very much for this fruitful and valuable discussion. But before you leave the stage, I would like to invite the speakers of the next session for a group photograph of both the panelists. So may I request uh, Ms. Joyce, Ms. Yuya, uh, Amy Frankel, Elizabeth, Mrima, O.S. Sermon, Vina Hingiro, Martha Rogers, Rebecca Lent, Teresa Mudit, and John Scallon to join us on the stage to have a group photograph of both the uh, panelists. Thank you very much. Once again, the speakers of the first session, I profusely thank you for this. Sir, please stay here for a photograph. Please stay here. Please, please stay here. Please stay here.